stream. Yo, Abby, what's up? Hey, sorry to bother you in your break. The truck just got here, so we're going to need some help unloading it when you get a sec. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No worries. I'll, I'll finish up here. Uh, I'll head down to help. What are you listening to, by the way? I saw you laughing over here by yourself. <laughs> oh, yeah. I probably look like a maniac or something. It's just this podcast I like. Oh, nice. Like a true crime thing? Sort of, actually. You know those childhood detective novels, like Encyclopedia Brown and Nancy Drew? Oh, yeah. Like the Hardy Boys. Yeah. That's actually what this episode's about. But uh, essentially, it's a true crime mystery show. But instead, they're solving those mysteries. And this is children solving these mysteries? No, it's a, it's adults, but they're pretty funny. Mm, right. <laughs> well, finish your break. I'm going to head down to help unload the truck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be right there. Boys, the fake crime podcast where I, Tyler Jacob Carr, lay out a childhood mystery novel for my co hosts, O'Neill Henry and Olivia Fumiati, to solve. How are you two feeling this week? Uh, if I'm being completely honest, a little nervous. Nervous? Is that so? Why, why is that, O'Neill? Well, last episode, somebody did get murdered, so I'm a little scared. Yeah, I suppose that's true, but don't worry about it. It's going to be fine. At least we know the answers to that one. This one I'm a little worried about. I'm also a little congested. I started every time I eat, I get congested now, and I don't know what that's about. That's something. That's a mystery. I don't even think the Hardy Boys could solve. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I wish I brought a fine novel for you boys today, you gentlemen, you folks, jokes. you people. Uh, today, I've brought for you the uh, the sixth book in the Hardy Boys mystery series, The Shore Road Mystery. Now, just as a setup, since it's been a while since we've touched on the Hardy Boys, brothers Frank and Joe, I did read the book, Frank and Joe Hardy are uh, <laughs> amateur detectives in the town of Bayport. It's never said what state it is in, but it is vaguely Definitely New Connecticut. Yeah, it's vaguely New England. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Definitely Connecticut. Yeah. Now, they are the Bayport sons of famous detective Fenton Hardy. Fenton Hardy being a, a real detective. Famous ghost. <laughs> yes. Wait, their dad <laughs> is also a detective? Yeah. So uh, the, the Hardy Boys. Your dad at work. So, the, so the Hardy Boys, they got into detectiving <laughs> when they helped their, their friend Jack and his dad, Mr. Dodd. Jack Dodd and their, his dad, Mr. Todd, sort of discover an old Mr. family. Todd? Dodd, D-O-D-D. Oh, dot. <laughs> exactly. So their friend Jack and his dad discover sort of an old family treasure because their family goes back to the mm. pilgrims. So they have lots of treasure in their family, right? Oh, this is oh, definitely no. New England. Oh, no. This their family goes back to the pilgrims. Definitely New England. Uh oh. That's a problem in and of itself. Now, Tyler, before we get yes. into this one, usually you do at every mm-hmm. episode, obviously, of you give us a uh, sort of a problematic rating. What would you rate this one out of 10? Yeah, this problematic one, I would probably <laughs> only give a five out of 10. There was very little oh, really? okay. that, you know, they they That's go swimming with girls and it's the, the way the book describes these underage <laughs> girls. Not great. Uh, I would also say uh, and we'll get to it. Uh, they are joined once again uh, by one of their friends. So, th- so every book, as you you guys know one of their like sort of rotating cabal of friends joins them as the comic relief uh and in this mm-hmm. book uh they're joined by their friend chet as two sort of main personality traits those being a hungry and b a coward Corny. oh yeah. <laughs> 
Joe is dating his sister. So I just want to throw that out. Oh, there's oh, some tension. Okay. There. There's some okay, tension. Okay, a little bit of interpersonal drama. Is, a little is bit the of girl Joe's dating there. Okay. one of the girls they go swimming with? It is with Chad. Okay, okay. <laughs> Ooh, okay, okay. Okay, okay. okay. We'll okay. get to it. Don't worry about okay. it. We'll get to it's it. That's a little, in a later spicy chapter. This episode. So as in every week, I sort of go chapter by chapter. And periodically, I'm going to give you guys uh, sort of a break to sort of theorize talk about the story so far break everything down uh and at and you know at, at any given point in between the chapters you can buzz in and say that you'd like to solve the mystery and mm-hmm. if you do okay. get it right i will tell you but if you do get it wrong i will uh, i have to give you the electroshock i'm sorry that's them's the rules <sighs> That's, yeah. that's just that's just how it is and that's so i don't now know why how we towels, decided on that last time i did make a mess yeah well you know that's on you that's 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 sort of your fault i'd say because you should be <laughs> that prepared is true. for I did it bring, did I did you bring put an, the I bring, newspaper down i put the newspaper down i brought an extra pair of underwear this time so we won't have an accident i'm wearing depends we don't have to worry about great it. <laughs> stuff great stuff gang uh so let's get started so our story kicks off with a theft on shore road Ooh. Cars have been getting stolen up and down Shore Road uh, in the town of Bayport. And the boys who sit on their motorcycles and listen to the sort of ham radio, the police broadcast for crimes, sort of like Batman, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. hear about it. Very illegal. Very illegal. Very illegal. Let's put that disclaimer out there. Don't do that. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they had radios back then? Wow. So, okay, so this is this is a, uh, an interesting point that I mentioned to Olivia before we started, but this is a book that has been re-copywritten, and there have been revised editions in 1928, 1956, 1964, and 1992. So I'm reading the 1992 okay. version, but there are remnants oh, so, so from every references. era in the book <laughs> no. mm. when it sort of gets updated a for modern times. A little tour de ages. Exactly. Mm. So cars are being stolen up and down Shore Road. So they ride their motorcycles. Frank and Joe are 18 and 17, by the way. They ride and they find the police. And, you know, the police are interviewing the guy whose car got stolen. And they see that all the cars around the car that got stolen have had their tires punctured. Ooh. Mm. So some neighborhood toughs. We're assuming here, maybe. So next day, they, in the middle of this, this is at the beach on Shore Road. So they're like, okay, well, this is interesting. Maybe this is something we'll get involved in. But for now, we're going to go swimming uh, with our friends. And while they're out in the water, they see their friend Jack Dodd from the very first book. Uh, ah. on Jack, And Jack is there. It's, and Jack is on a boat. Uh, and they swim out to Jack's boat and say hi. But while they're on Jack's boat, something hits it and it starts sinking. What? Oh no, everybody swim, everybody swim, get your floaties. Yeah, so they save the boat, and Jack's like, wow, thanks, that was weird. There's not normally a lot of rocks down here. What what must have hit my boat? And the boys sort of save it, and, and Jack goes, by the way, swing by my place tomorrow. I have another family mystery for you guys to solve. Oh, okay. So okay. we're sort of a so combo mystery mysteries. going on. In t- mm, there's like we're multiple mysteries. mysteries. So we're, we're solving for cars, and we're also solving for boats. Now, so they come, Tyler, yeah. is it now legally mm-hmm. speaking, just yes. to cover our bases, sure. is there a tie in? Can we just rule out cars sort of like the movie where they are alive? <laughs> you can. And maybe the car did you can run, rule run that by out, and shiv. But I, there's you can rule out cars in which they have eyes and they and they definitely procreate in some way. But you can't rule mm, out that Jesus they Christ. are vampire cars. Oh, they're sort of gotcha, like undead, gotcha. so sort maybe, of like so a, like a Stephen King, King situation. Yeah, okay, okay, I want to okay, throw okay. that out for you. Okay, theory, theory. I have a theory. An early theory. We're okay, not even. Let me let me finish chapter one real fast, and then you can throw a theory out. So at the end of chapter one, they go back to the beach after saving their friend Jack's boat, and they find out that one of their friend Jerry's car is uh, stolen. So they chase after it on their motorcycles after it gets stolen, and they have to skid to a stop, and they crash into a fence because a produce truck is blocking their way, and the farmer driving the produce truck sort of waves angrily at them and then drives off and he seems like a real shady figure. And that's how the first chapter ends. And mind you, that was all five pages. <laughs> dense! Oh my this dense is a dense reading, book. Huh? This book is 150 okay. pages long and I want you to keep that in mind as I sort of oh read out this, mm. all the things that happen. <laughs> now at the end of chapter one, Olivia, you said you have a theory. My theory is that they're sinking the cars and the boat hit a car. 
Mm, that's a late. that's an interesting. Unfortunately, interesting that's one. not correct. So I'm just going to turn the dial up to one on the electroshock and just Ooh, sort of give you it. a little a little burn. Yeah, so I would like to just start laying out facts and sort of just yeah, not, not necessarily guesses, but just just sort of laying out the facts. So one car missing. Two cars. The other cars. There have been punctured. two cars stolen at this now, point. Now there are two cars. There are two cars. But let's, let's, just, let's, let's, not, let's, get, let's not get ahead of ourselves. There was one car missing at first. All the cars around it, tires punctured. Right. Now, Tyler, now, now, Tyler, as the mystery master yourself, were all the cars around friends, car number two, were all those tires punctured as well? No. He was, he was actually carjacked. Oh, he was carjacked. Oh, that's, that's, okay. inter- that's, that's a little bit more important. Okay. Any so, information okay. about and the then, carjacker? He didn't get a good look at them. They knocked him unconscious somehow. Jesus Christ. Ah, they knocked him out. Okay. 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 Now, how do we know friend uh, friend Jack? Was it Jack? So, which, uh, which one? So, Jerry got his car stolen. Jerry, Jack was sorry. on the boat that almost sank. Jerry's yeah. just well, one we'll of their friends. We'll get back to the boat. Hey, <laughs> Jerry doesn't come back into the story, so you don't need to know about Jerry. Oh, okay. Jerry, <laughs> Jerry okay, is well, there to get his car, car got, stolen. Car got stolen. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry, Jerry's car got fridged. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Well, listen, everybody needs one. <laughs> Okay, so, uh, right, should we right. dive into chapter two? So chapter two opens up the boys return back to their home where their aunt and their mom are making dinner. And their dad says he needs to go out of town for a while. He has a case in New York. I'm just going to read it off. Frank asked him if it's a big case. And his dad responds, quote, I'll be in New York City, perhaps for several weeks. Authorities there have asked me to work in an arms smuggling case. The smugglers are apparently supplying American criminals with foreign made lethal weapons. So I guess this was oh. in a time period where... <laughs> You, where Post American lethal weapons, weapons were okay, <laughs> but if yeah. they were made, they were bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was a different time. We could say that right off the top. <laughs> oh, so to move on, before they get there, before they get there, before, you know, his dad heads out the next morning, they're sitting around the dinner table and they hear some commotion. They go outside and their dad's car is currently being stolen outside their house. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Do they live on Shore Just, Road? Man. You know, they they don't live on Shore Road. Mm. Okay, so where, where do we they know? Live near just Shore Road. It's very important. They do live near, near Shore, Shore Road. Road. Okay, okay. As long as our radius. So their dad is chases off the criminals. Suddenly, on the police scanner, they hear about a commotion and saying that they caught the criminals. And they're like, "Oh shit, we gotta go figure it out." They follow a police car that drives by, right? Uh, and they end up at Jack Dodd's house, Ooh. the guy with the boat. Ooh, the, the guy with the boat. Uh, their friend okay. who has their friend who's descended from pilgrims, and they are arresting Jack and here's his dad. Oh, for the huh. crime. So they found one of the stolen cars on the Dodd property with Ooh. Jack's fishing pole in the trunk. Mm. And that is the end of chapter two. I just want to. Ooh, OK. Now, Tyler, off the top, I think Jack Dodd did it. <laughs> <laughs> If I'm just going off of clues, we is have this a, Is this an official theory from you, O'Neill? <laughs> just going off of the facts we have, if we're playing this out serial style, I think Jack Dodd did it. Do you think that Jack Dodd did it? I'm going to counter with the next thing where Jack and their dad say that they didn't do it. <laughs> oh, well, now we have a he shed, she shed. So the start of chapter three, they're like, yo, we don't know how that got there. I don't know how they got my fishing pole <laughs> okay. in there. Actual question here. Where on the property was it found? Just like near their house. Just like it, they, they're farmers. So it's just like on they're the farmers. farm. Oh, okay. 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 Interesting. It's a very, actually a very important point that they're farmers. They are farmers. Now that's interesting because we did talk about earlier about that produce truck. And normally I don't, I don't lay off the thin clues, but, but some strands are starting to come together. Now, Olivia, do you have anything, anything from this, I wanna, from I wanna this hear particular more chapter? Before I make any okay, other okay. well, series, well, I don't want to get shocked again. So to continue through chapter three, before Mr. Dodd and Jack are taken off to the pokey, Mr. Dodd goes, hey, boys, uh, you helped me with our last family mystery. Before we go to jail, I need you guys to help me solve this one because there's a deadline on it and I'm about to go to jail. So I can't do it. Right. <laughs> uh, so let me let me yeah, break you off a piece mysteries. of this family mystery. All right, family mystery time. As you may know, Mr. Dodd began. The Dodd family, while small today, goes back several hundred years in this country. He pointed to some brown leather volumes. So many Native Americans. There are records in these centuries of Dodds, records that go back to before the Revolutionary War. Unfortunately, they tell us little about the man at the root of the Pilgrim mystery. We do know that in the year 1647, 
one Elias Dodd embarked from Plymouth Colony in a small skiff with his wife and three children. A good seaman with considerable knowledge of astronomy, he went in search of a horseshoe-shaped inlet he had heard of from an Indian. <laughs> Jesus oh. Christ. <laughs> See, I said a five. It's like... Yeah, no, okay, I get it. It's yeah, we're, we're there. Dodd hoped to establish a settlement there, which other families might come later. That inlet is now Barmet Bay, which is where they are. This is where the Bayport is. Now, uh, he mm-hmm, goes on mm-hmm, to explain mm-hmm. that there was a hurricane and his boat crashed and they all perished along with all of his treasure. So they don't ah. know where the treasure is, but they do know there are only eight days to solve this mystery. And before he's hauled off to jail and the boys are like, why is there only eight days to solve this mystery? And that is the end of chapter. Four. OK, OK, OK. Interesting. I have a couple of questions here. First off, pilgrims having treasure. Hmm. Hardy boys. Hmm. I don't think historically pilgrims had a lot of treasure. Let's just say. Listen, this was written in 1928. <laughs> I don't know what they knew. I don't think they knew anything. Oh, I did miss something in chapter three. They asked the the family if anyone might have it out for them. And they said there's an, a farmhand they used to hire who was an ex-con, and ex-military by the name of Slagle. S-L-A-G-E-L. Oh, that's the guy from Lord of the Rings. Yeah, exactly. And he <laughs> values their treasure because it's it's just, no, I'm kidding. Oh, okay. Um, okay. But he didn't do good work and they did fire him. So they, that that is their first clue, is that they need to go look for the this one guy. Ring. All right. And that is the now I am thinking that this has to do with the One Ring. It is about the One Ring. That's actually what the treasure is, and you solved the mystery. Good <sighs> I'm, job. I, I'm starting to your your riddle, riddle master, is starting to come unthreaded because I'm starting to put together some clues. Now, Livia, what do you what do you what do you have so far? I don't think the Dodds did it. Uh, I think this is just the like inciting incident. Be like, oh, you know, now it's affecting someone we know. And mm-hmm. yeah, I, I don't think the Dodds did it. But again, I need more information before I make any. Do you want to know my hanging thread right now, Olivia? What do you got right now? It is why was Papa, why was Hardy Papa targeted in Fenton? all of this, right? Because right now it's it's sort of a closed circle as far as we have the farm, farm, Dodds, you know why? Why was mad why was Papa? His sons got motorcycles, not good enough to be yeah. stolen. <laughs> they were like these these sons roll around with half the wheels I not do. Not nearly this enough fair. wheels. Well, not it's actually the same number wheels. of wheels you do because it's two motorcycles. But you That's do need fair. two people to <laughs> steal two fair. motorcycles, though. <laughs> that is that is oh that is also you can true. steal twice as many wheels, wheels with wheels, less people. Twice as many wheels with half the people. I don't think this is one person, though, by the way. It's many. many. I also don't think it's one person because I, I don't know how. That's a they good. I, I will give you. Hint. It is more. It is more than one person. Mm-hmm. Woo! It is. It yeah. is. It is I, quickly I determined in the book so that it is a shore road. What they call the shore road gang. That they are. Mm. That they. That they. Uh, it, it's not a gang per se, but that's just what they call this mysterious group of people stealing cars and framing the dots. Ah, okay. So it's multiple, multiple people. At least two people, maybe more, maybe less. Let's, we'll see. Let's dig All further because right. we're only three chapters into a twenty chapter book. Now some of them are much shorter Jesus than others, Christ. but All let's right. go. We got to turn and burn, <laughs> gang. Okay. The, chapter four. The Dodds leave, and another one of Jack's items is found in another stolen car. So leading the police to be like, oh, we got to arrest these guys. It's it's it's, it's the Dodds. Yeah, my my vote. So the they Dodds. the boys are out on shore road, sort of just scoping it out. And they're almost run down by a car. A car almost runs them off the road. And they hmm. on purpose they sort of have to go home after this on purpose. Yeah. Ah. And they go home. And when they're, they're at good. home, they get a knock on the door and a mysterious man with a New York accent and the initials CM embroidered onto his, his jacket. Uh, sort of tells them that he's heard about the famous Hardy Boys and he wants to hire them for a a mystery in the big city in New York. And he says, you can come with me right now and I'll pay you lots of money. And they say, unfortunately, we're already on a case, so we can't Uh take him on that offer. Mm. He goes, he says, that's disappointing. Uh, Isn't that where Papa went? That is where Papa went. Mm. I'm worried about Papa now. And I don't know if I can focus on this mystery because I don't know where Papa is. Can you give me a Papa guarantee? And not, I'm not, I'm not talking about Papa John. Papa, Papa does live, and no one dies. No one will die in this okay. book. Okay, <laughs> people Good. will almost die many times. 
<laughs> good, good. I mean, hey, before before we get into it, it is 1920-something. These cars weren't made very well. They're always almost dying. Yeah, these are 1920s <laughs> oh, motorcycles. Like, these are yeah. death traps. Yeah, no, no, yeah, these are, yeah. So at the end of the chapter, they go, oh, maybe we should go look for Jack's boat because Jack had a boat. Maybe there's a clue on there. They go down to Jack's mm -hmm. boat, um, and right before they can hop on board, uh, they're chloroformed and knocked out. <laughs> Whoa. 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 So at the start of chapter five, they wake up and the boat's gone and they're fine on the dock. This all happens sort of in like half a page. That that seems like that would be an easy way to get rid of the, our, our, our very good boys. <laughs> I know, our very glad good they're boys. Still, glad, glad they're still around. No, unfortunately. Hmm. And by the way, they are doing this with their friend Chet, whose main sort of personality trait is fat. <laughs> so that's There's another be area where this book is mm, <laughs> not great. Mm. Uh, and, and we'll get into Chet a little later. I have a little game for you now, guys to play based on Chet. Based on Chet. <laughs> good, good, good. As we do every episode. We love Chet. Yeah. So they go back home and they sort of regroup with Chet and sort of discover all their clues. So I just want to lay out what they lay out for you guys. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So there are a few things that seem certain, Frank concluded. One, the thieves appear to be after late model cars and to steal most of them at night. Two, the gang can't be a small one. Their success alone would suggest that. And three, the stolen cars are most likely driven north up Shore Road. Hmm. What's north of There's nothing Shore Road? north. That, that, that's a plot point that was a little too convoluted for me to introduce to you guys because it's more about them okay. figuring out. It's less solving who's doing it and more and where them the cars how are. to. Yeah. Gotcha. So, so basically, mm. the, the, they keep hearing that the cars are driving south and the police keep searching south, but they find U-turn tracks. So people are there, they're driving south to get the police to chase, and then they U-turn and go north to trick Pull in a whole, pull, pull in a, a godfather, a full godfather. So while they're in their sort of shed out back, which they use as their base of operations, someone throws a grenade through the window. What the fuck? <laughs> what, what the fuck? What the now, fuck? Now, uh, now, I know these Hardy Boys are very perceptive. Did they see the make and model of grenade? They did not see the make and model of grenade, but there is a moment where God Frank it. sort of grabs it Captain America style and contemplates his own mortality before realizing <laughs> that it's fake. <laughs> Read right oh, now. Read okay, it is a fake grenade. Right now, Tyler Dage and <laughs> Suddenly, there was a deafening crash. A heavy object sailed through the rear window, sending splinters of glass against Joe's neck. Chet flew from his chair, and Aunt Gertrude screamed. In the center of a floor lay a black hand grenade. Run! Run, she cried. But Frank knew that in a few seconds, all of them might be killed. He snatched up the grenade and ran to the window with the deadly weapon. Would he be able to hurl it out? <laughs> Oh, Excellent. What a cliffhanger. Excellent. What a good hate cliffhanger. Joe, ever the hero. Mm, okay. And it's a fake hand grenade. It's a it fake hand out. grenade. So at the start of the next chapter, he throws it out the window and everyone sort of braces and then it doesn't go off. Mm, is it a fake hand grenade or a bad hand it's grenade? It's a fake hand grenade. <laughs> it's, a dummy. it's a fake grenade. So they, they do mm, determine it's fake. Okay. It's not real. It's a fake hand grenade. Uh, it's gotcha. a dummy, all right, Frank it's said to himself. Um, now, <laughs> it's just a bad they hand do grenade. look in the hand grenade and there's a note tucked into the hand grenade and the note uh, reads, keep off Shore Road or next time this will be a real one. <laughs> oh, Mm, so we got terrorism now. Ooh, these these Hardy Boys. First Grand Theft Auto, and now terrorism. Hmm, I love it, guys. What are we doing here, huh? Hardy Boys, you guys might not come down. Go these to are also I I this one down. Teenage boys solving mysteries. They gotta go to college. They can't afford to be grenaded. Friends. <laughs> so to continue on chapter six, they yes. go. Listen, we're being threatened with grenades. We should continue solving this mystery. Solving the mystery. Solve it faster, guys. Solve it faster. If we're going to do it, we got to get this shit faster. done. Uh, so they go and visit their <laughs> drifter friend, Scratch. Mm, we love who lives Scratch. Out on, who, who camps around Shore Road. He's a drifter. Mm -hmm. Definitely written to be black in a very racist oh, way. No. Oh, <laughs> it's no. never mentioned what race anyone is, but they are all white and Scratch is black. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Boise. Uh, and Bump it up to a six. Uh, so Scratch says that he's seen Slagle wandering up and down Shore Road the last few days. And then the brothers find two men tied up after their car was stolen. They find a, a, two guys tied up on the side of the road. And they're like waving and they see their car sort of peeling away. So they give mm -hmm. chase again. But the men drive into and out of the woods and sort of lose them. But 
The Hardy Boys do find, this is another clue for you guys, they do find flecks of brown paint all over the ground, as well as a dead bat. Hmm, okay, paint. okay. Well, here we go. So, so, uh, so, okay. Olivia, let's, let's, let's discuss here. Dead what, bat. Are, what are we thinking so far? Dead bat and brown paint. So, Slagle up and down. Is there anything about it, the note that is attached to the grenade? Is it handwritten? It is handwritten, yes. Okay. Oh, uh, and also at the end of this chapter, they're informed by the chief of police that the Dodds have broken out of prison and are on the run. Oh, my God. Mm, good God. Guys, come on. You don't do that when you're innocent. You know that. First thing. Okay, so now, we, so now we're really now, on the it is coach. implied that they were kidnapped. From the prison. Okay. Oh, so they were mm, broken out of worse. jail. They did not break out of jail. Now the timeline okay. has gotten even shorter. They're still suspects numero uno, but the boys are like, these guys were definite. They, there's no way they could have broken out gotcha. of prison. Okay. So, so we have a couple of clues. So we do have a couple of clues now, and I think that this is important. Now, Tyler, tell me a little bit more about this city, the shore side. Is there, is it, uh, is it a very cavey city? It is a very cliffy city. There are lots of cliffs. It's sort mm. of like a cliffy cliffs. shoreline is how I would describe okay. it. Okay, so so the bat thing could be perhaps a location up north where these cars are being taken. But the brown pain is still throwing me. Well, why don't hmm. I continue through chapter seven? And I think there will be some interesting stuff in here for you guys to sort of okay. go okay. over. Okay. So at the start of chapter seven, they go home. And they get a mysterious knock on the door and they find someone ding dong dish them and leaves a message in a bottle. And the message in the bottle is from 1647, the year that Elias Dodd disappeared. And the message reads, when the storm broke alone to give our position in the hope that dot 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 and then sort of fades away in the hope that vegetation, no protection, shelter, but crash of countless dot 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 breaking black willows, high vein of gold. So they'd figure that this is where the whole treasure thing comes out, right? This is where this guy discovered treasure. They determined that there's like a lot of willow trees around creek beds in the area. So they sort of determine mm. that the treasure is hidden somewhere in a creek bed where there's willow trees. And they mm. did they also don't mm. know who left mm. this message. Okay. Wow, there's a lot of things stacking there's up. There's a lot right of now. stuff happening mm. in this book, mm. boys. Mm. This is a great this is a mm. great book. With lots of stuff happening. I don't have any theories so far. Okay, I here's here's my theory so far. And this this one is a full theory, all right? I'm just going to lay out everything I have so far. We have this mystery case that's going on in the big city. CM. We that that dad went. Yes, but but also that dad went out to. Mm. And and these these seem too close to be coincidental. Cuz there's the arms, also the explosive potentially for grenade. Potentially. That's where that connection I'm I'm trying to draw those lines to. So that's one agent. Then the other agents we have are the farmers. We are farmers. That's right. Farmers insurance is definitely in on this. This is one big insurance scam. Tyler, am I right? I'm turning the buzzer up to two for you, buddy. Uh, that's actually incorrect. It is not an insurance scam. I'm sorry. Uh, there, there are cars being stolen, and uh, there is a creek bed treasure mystery, and uh, neither of them is an insurance scam. All right, uh, read chapter eight, to read on. All right, Tyler. Uh, in chapter seven, so th they they determine that this is some sort of creek bed, right? And they're like, well, we don't want to search the ground on foot, so they go to their friend Bill. Bill has a plane. So they're like, we're going to go up in this uh, plane and sort of fly yeah, along Bill? the coastline and sort of figure right, out Bill? where this creek bed is. Right? Yeah, so they dude. go up in this plane and are immediately shot at. Uh, Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, so they fly low and they Whoa. land the plane and they're like, wow, what the fuck was that? Uh, and that's how chapter seven. That's is. insane. That's kind of crazy. Hey, Hardy Boys, you might want to sit this one out. <laughs> it's getting real dangerous. So we've got, and there's like about some like real bills. international criminal stuff happening. And yeah. they're like, we yeah. got to yeah. solve the mystery the of the day, stolen this cars. Would not be, this would not fly. Dang, Bayport's like. <laughs> the FBI would be in this. Yeah. This is like FBI level. This is this is a problem. Jeepers. Are okay. the local, how are the local, hey, wait, hold on. Another question. How are the local police reacting? Are they reacting appropriately at every step of the way, or is there some funny business going on? Every time something like this happens, there's always a sentence that's like, they reported it to the local police and then went home. And then the police are like, cool, that the party boys are on the case. <laughs> oh, Boise. my God. God. Glad, thanks, hey, for, Cap, thanks for keeping right? us Jesus updated. Christ. Thanks for keeping us updated, Frank. <laughs> 
<laughs> Man. <laughs> hey, let's defund the police. Give, give it to the Hardy, to the Hardy Boys. boys. <laughs> <laughs> They're doing the Lord's work, apparently. Community police Getting shot out in planes. Fuck. This is going to come up a lot the rest of the book. They determine there's really only like three roads they could be turning on and off of on Shore Road, right? So they start doing stakeouts. So the first night they do a stakeout and they see Slagle, the guy who hates the Dodds, in a stolen car. Actually, it's a regular car, but they hear on the radio that it's stolen. But this car doesn't match the description of the car that was stolen. Mm, so maybe a red herring. Maybe Slagle is is the fall okay, man. A car potentially stolen. Okay. Maybe Slagle got his act together, bought a new car. So they follow him to a hotel where he's been staying under a fake name. And then they drive back out onto Shore Road where they come across the Burnham Farm. And the Burnham Farm is run by a man named Burnham his last name they never give his first name and Bo. Uh, his first name is Bo. Bo. don't do this to me don't do this to me don't do this to me O'Neal. he does music he hold on to your pants uh, there's a fire at the burnham farm oh and, no uh, oh. <laughs> and in the middle oh, of this wait, wait, sort wait, of tyler, ritual tyler 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 wait 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 tyler is he inside there is a man inside this fire o'neal o'neal <laughs> could you give him a shot just for that really bad joke and how emotionally connected I am to Tober. Thank you, Tyler. So they go to the farm. There's sir, there's like a crop circle fire in the field. There's like a circle of fire. And inside the fire is their drifter friend, Scratch. So they oh, dive no! into the flames. Fuck, Scratch. They dive into the flames and they save Scratch. Oh, thank God. Heroes. So Scratch says he was digging around and he was just wandering around. And he saw Slagle go up to this farm, the Burnham farm. And he was like, mm. whoa what the fuck and then someone gassed him with chloroform <laughs> and he oh woke up God. entering a fire oh where are these God. people getting all this chloroform oh in this my economy God. my god so oh at this point God. we're in chapter 9 and just to continue the boys are like shit we got a date to get to I know there's like a murder going <laughs> <laughs> There's like multiple attempted murders, but we got, got it. We got Listen, ourselves boys, a date. The Hardy boys will <laughs> be boys. Of the Hardy so boys. Uh, they go <laughs> meet Chet, Chet's uh, sister Iola, who Joe is dating. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so let's dive a little bit deeper into this date. Oh, and uh, <laughs> because... Frank's girlfriend Cassie is also there. This is going to be oh, important okay. later. I was going to say, is it a double date? It is, is it's it it's a, a double date, situation? and Chet's playing fifth wheel hmm. to his own sister. Maybe a love triangle situation. Wait, can you imagine if it was Joe, Frank, Iola, and Chet? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's it. Oh, shit. I completely forgot. Scratch says he was like, oh, also, after he saves him, he's like, I was wandering around. I saw Slagle. This happens during the date. <laughs> Scratch shows up. He's like, Scratch shows up. Scratch shows up. He's like, by the way, I forgot he, to tell you guys. He's the waiter. He serves the spaghetti. Exactly. <laughs> he's like, I forgot to tell you guys. The reason I was out wandering around is I saw a man's size spider crawling over the cliffs <laughs> whoa that's a mm, a man-sized spider okay so now harry potter's in this and i'm thinking maybe we have an ink heart situation now now scratch can't be trusted because he's a drifter and the party boys are like that can't be true it must be a, a he man can't be trusted because he's black who looks like a spider. <laughs> he's crawling like a spider oh god mm, okay okay, okay. Next chapter. Please. A man-sized spider. <laughs> yeah, let's so continue on, on with this date. So they go out. They go out on their boat, the Sleuth. So they go out for like a little of evening sort of. Sleuth. Okay. <laughs> they have access to motorcycles. They have access to cars. They have access to planes. They have access to boats. This is a real James Bond situation. But they did name their boat the Sleuth, which is a little bit on the nose, Hardy it's Boys. I don't know. Hysterical. You guys might be a little it's bit too into hysterical. this. <laughs> Why is their boat named so the So they go out swimming, they anchor the boat, and they're like, let's go swimming, let's go for a dip in that chilly Long Island sound, right? <laughs> These are definitely white people. <laughs> so they dive in, and while they're there, uh, they're sort of swimming around, and they're like, oh shit, where's Cassie? So Frank's like, oh shit, my girlfriend's missing. So he dives down. Cassie is trapped in a net underwater. So Frank has what to save fuck, her Cassie? and and save her underwater and picks her back up and, and and sort of gives her CPR and saves her life on the boat. Whoa, little intense, Hardy boys. You might want to chill it out. You got like other mysteries yeah. to solve and spaghetti to eat. Now and then she claims she was hit on the head by a diver and wrapped in a net. This is a te- another attempted what murder in this what Hardy the Boys fuck? book. Who are these murderers? The police <laughs> need to fucking get on. Jesus Christ. You guys just have a rampant almost murders. Jesus. So they're like, ah, shit, we can't be going on dates. Okay, wait, by a diver, though. Yes. 
Okay, interesting. Uh, so they have the black. technology. So they adopt mm. Jedi celibacy. Okay, continue. They adopt Jedi <laughs> celibacy to solve the crime. And they, <laughs> yeah, no more. So they're like, either. shit. We're okay, we got to figure this out. <laughs> so they go and no stake out the. Promises. They go and stake out the Burnham farm, right? They stake out the okay. farm where they tried to burn Scratch alive, and they find Slagle talking to Burnham the farmer. <laughs> more like burn. Don't do it. Crops. So they leave, and they're sc- they're like, well, what should we do? And then they hear uh, the tractor going, and they're almost run over by the tractor, and they have to like roll out of the way. And like, oh, is this an old timey tractor? It is an old timey tractor. Like a big. Could one. that have been the spider? I so, want to know how you made that connection. Because you don't know. Oh, so I guess the crawlers, but like the you know like the farm crawlers that like water their things, like water crops. There, there's like these long protracted yeah, water. Yeah, I know what you're talking that, about. Like, yeah, they have like legs that move along the crops to water. Oh. Could that have been the spider? In that case, points more I'm towards... I'm assuming this is an old tiny tractor with big wheels. I'm going to continue. So they avoid this and they sort of chase Slagle through the woods and they sort of confront him in this field. And he's been walking with a cane this whole time. And it turns out the cane is actually a sword. He pulls the sword on him. <laughs> And he's like, uh, and he says, "How about you?" Well, he says, Kane, "Don't." And then he, he gives him a, "Hey, don't fuck with me. This is strike two on you guys. <laughs> if you <laughs> if you guys keep bothering Wait, me, I'm gonna kill one? you." Well, strike one was a grenade. Oh, oh okay. okay. So, so, so do we confirm, strike two is like we might confirm that the grenade was from Siegel. Yes. <laughs> and then they have a sword fight as they do it. No, they just go, "Nah, dude, I don't novel. want to get into a sword fight," and they sort of back off. Hey, at least they know when to call it quits. <laughs> they know when to pack it in and bring it home. <laughs> they didn't stop at being shot at in a plane. They stopped at when the fucking guy brings drowned. a sword. When the guy with a limp brings out a sword, then you know it's time to set the mystery down, I guess. Not when your girlfriend, yeah, not when your girlfriend almost gets drowned. Not the chlor- not all the chloroform. So two more important <laughs> things happen in this chapter that I want to get through. First, they go back to Slagle's hotel and they go to the telegram office. because <laughs> Yes, of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, it turns out that there was a torn up note in the waste paper bin that was like a draft that he didn't send to his boss. And I want to read that for you right now. More nerve now, trying for eight cylinder stock, taking care of two friends, attend to them when job done in a week or so, expect you for shipment tomorrow. And this was addressed to one Carlton Melliman of New York City. Mm, and mm. the CM comes back around. Mm. Okay. Melamin. So I'm putting the dots together. Taking care of two friends. I don't think that's the Hardy Ben boys. I don't think that's them. I think it's our escaped pilgrim <laughs> relatives <laughs> that <laughs> they are taking care of them. And I, again, I don't know where the brown paint comes in, but the bat thing points me to a cave up north. So that's all I know right now is that I think the the cars are somewhere up north. CM has something to do with it. Maybe CM is trying to divert resources up north with like the weapons trade thing. Mm. That's as far as I got right now. Olivia, what you got? Carlton Milliman, obviously involved. So I'm assuming that the, obviously the cars are being sent to New York. It's probably somehow related to Papa, but I am mm-hmm. thinking, so obviously the cars are being supplied to a place in New York City. They're taking older make model cars with eight cylinders. I don't think they're driving mm, them to the okay. city. I think they're hiding them somewhere in town just because they're awaiting a shipment. So that probably yes. implies more lots of cars. Um, or perhaps to pick up the cars. Yes, to pick up the cars. The other thing that I'm thinking is because of the amount of... Fake grenades. They have access, swords. Let me fake grenades. Well, those are a little bit different, but... <laughs> Um, do 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 Carlton Milliman. Let me just. Well, see why don't I? Why don't I give you yeah, sort of one more clue, the and then I can bat, dive into our. I think our, it's in a cave. We are technically we're halfway through the book, but only about there's only about five more chapters before the mystery is revealed, and then it's sort of resolving everything. So we okay, can through the rest gotcha, of the gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so at the end of this chapter, they go out after figuring out this clue and they are riding down shore road on their motorcycles and they see the spider-man 
they see the Spider-Man crawling up the side of a wall. <laughs> <laughs> um, which means, so and they're distracted. And, and Joe, it turns out they've strung the net across the highway, and Joe is clotheslined and wrecks his motorcycle and has to go Jesus to the hospital. Jesus Christ! <laughs> no! Holy shit! Guys? Hardy Boys! Oh my I god! Got Fuck me! Wait, so who's holding the net? It's like tied no, to either yeah. end of the oh, street. Oh, that's funny. Whoops. So, God damn. On that note, uh, I'd like to play a little fun mini segment with you guys to sort of take us into the mid roll, and that is How Does Chet's Subplot Pay Off in the Climax? <laughs> this is a fun little mini game that has nothing to do with how the mystery yeah, is resolved, uh-huh. but I think it is a fun thing to guess. So, throughout this book, Chet is described as fat. He's described as mm-hmm. poor chubby. It is problematic. Mm-hmm. But in mm-hmm. this book, he's on a diet. He's become a vegan. Oh, God. So lots oh, of the book is God. describing him longingly looking at cakes. The Hardy Boy's mom trying to get him to eat chocolate. You know what I mean? But he's like, no. Mm. And, and to go along with his veganism, he is now attempting to become a botanist. Mm. Okay, okay. So the whole time he's like reading a botany book and then he starts reading about water-based plant life, right? So he's big into plants. And there's lots of jokes where he's like, oh, but you guys are should be glad that you have a real scientist along. And then they're like, your backpacks <laughs> in poison ivy. Like that, that type of, you know, funny <laughs> little <laughs> jokes <laughs> like that. Now I want you guys to tell me, I want you both to guess, how does this subplot pay off in the climax? <laughs> I got Olivia, it. I you can go first. I got got it. Right. I Olivia, yes. So because Chet is looking at botany and other plants and things like that, he and would know vegetables. where the local like willow trees are going to be. So he'll probably be the one to discover where the creek beds are that has the gold. Can I add on top of that? Can I add on top of that? Yeah. He knows that and he knows which farmers or farmland would be growing in that area to tie back into the farm. I have another theory. I have another theory. Okay, okay. We have okay, another theory. 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 Theory time. The cars are being hidden in Burnham's barn. Mm, okay, I was thinking in the produce van, but I was like, I don't know how big produce vans used to no, be. No, Neil, that then. is a thing. There's a theory the Hardy Boys posit and tell the police in this in mm-hmm. this chapter, actually, that they're like, hey, maybe okay. they hide the cars in the van because in the in the big produce truck because they're big enough to fit. It's big enough to fit like two two cars in it. But they do go okay, check yeah. the, the van, and there's nothing in the produce truck, unfortunately. Okay, well at least I'm on the same. Now level as we will Boys, check so. back <laughs> in with Can you guess Chet's subplot and how it will impact the climax? Wait, okay, a can, little I, can bit I actually later. can I do one more, yeah, yeah, one yeah, yeah. more. Go ahead, go ahead. He, yeah, he eats on all the vegetables sure. that are sort of have them stuck in like a big Pac-Man and just sort of cleaves, <laughs> cleaves them out. <laughs> Great stuff. <laughs> well, we'll check in on and see if you guys are right after this. Hello. I'll let you get right back into the action in just a second. But thank you for listening to this episode of The Bit Depth. Uh, these are our f- every four to six episodes. We'll do one of these, one of the rejected uh, episodes and we'll turn them into a full length episode. Uh, so yeah, uh, this was our first one. It was very fun to do. We, we, we wanted to get Nancy boys done right away, especially because Tyler hasn't had a B segment yet because this is a bit depth. That means it will not be a fee drop this Friday. So we will be taking a little bit of a break, but as always, please share the show with your friends. Make sure you follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And check out our website, 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 website.biz. And as always, if any of your friends, if you catch any of your dirty little friends trying to steal our ideas, go ahead and email us about it at email, email, email at website, website, website.biz. We're on Reddit and TikTok and Instagram and Twitter at Triple P Cast. And we have the Reddit r slash pod, pod, pod. And tweet about the show using the hashtag pod, pod, pod. And there won't be a post scroll, so I'll see you guys uh, next Monday. We're back, gang, with chapter 11. So Joe's clothesline goes to the hospital. They Frank goes and while he's in the hospital, goes and talks to their fisherman friend who says he's also seen a Spider-Man. And they see right near where the fisherman saw the Spider-Man through a spyglass. They see Carlton Millman on the cliff. But before they can get back to shore, he's gone. So that's chapter 11. I'm going to burn through to chapter 12. because just like kind of a lame chapter. Okay. Go on. So they're driving around. Joe, they they actually take Chet's old beat up car now because Joe's motorcycle's mm-hmm. wrecked. Joe gets out of the hospital and he's like, I'm back on the case. He's fucking high <laughs> as 
all get out. We did not have great medicine back then. It was just cocaine He's and just morphine. High on this morphine. man is fucking Maybe that explains flying. everything that's happened in this one so far. <laughs> uh, so they're driving around and they're driving back to Shore Road, but they drive past the Dodds house and they see a light on in the Dodds house and they're like, what the fuck? The Dodds are missing. So they go in and they snoop mm-hmm. around. It turns out that is actually Jack Dodds Uncle Martin Dodd, the professor at the local university, who is there. How did we not guess this, Olivia? Martin Dodd's been literally in every book. <laughs> Olivia, how did we forget about <laughs> Martin Dodd? About he should have been on our short about list. Martin, you know? Uh, Martin, just so you guys know, Martin is in every book. Uh, but <laughs> is he actually? Oh, oh, the Dodds are all in every book. Either they're, they're sort of like a Good. central plot line. But. Uh, Martin Dodd is like, I've been snooping around town because I don't want to get dragged into this. And I've been trying to solve this mystery, right? That was this family mystery. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, I, and I have to snoop around because somebody's clearly after our family. And he's like, so I left the bottle with the note at your house. And it was like a shorthand for it was like a code, I'm assuming. Exactly. So he, so he explains basketball. why there's an eight day time limit that by now it's been a couple days at this point. And he explains. So at the time, they navigated by looking at Venus in the sky and Venus has mm-hmm. an irregular sky pattern that happens every eight years. So this year is one of the years that they could use Venus to find the location of the hidden treasure. But ah. they can't do it for another eight years. So this is why. Yes. So they have to do it within these next eight days or it will have to be another eight years. Exactly. So they get a message while they're at the Dodds house. Someone leaves a note on the front door that says that's like the Dodds. It's like from the Dodds. People just not talk anymore. This is the problem with this generation. <laughs> just leaving notes on doorsteps instead <laughs> of actually having a conversation with your neighbors. God. And the message is like, hey, you guys should meet us. We escaped. Meet us at this location. Come alone. It's a setup. It's a trap. It's a trap. It's it a, is a, it's trap, a trap, O'Neill. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> So they actually split up for this. Oh, Ooh. good. So Frank goes to a stakeout. Joe goes to this location alone. <laughs> great, no. great work by the Hardy Boys. And uh, the Joe. rest of this chapter of sort of involves Chet staring longingly at a piece of cake. And he's <laughs> this whole chapter. Where, where, where's Chet? Can we get a beat on Chet? Where, yes, where this is a good Chet? point on Chet. Chet goes off on his own and he follows the produce truck because he has a car. So this is a, this is a yes. Chet centric chapter because the other boys mm, are fuck gone. Yeah, dude. So Chet fuck yeah, dude. Uh, goes and follows the truck to an abandoned junkyard where he mm, is okay. jumped by a guy. Chlor- more chloroform? More chloroform. Yes. <laughs> God damn it, guys. Somebody needs to find out where the shortage at the chloroform factory is because these guys are just fucking what? running loose. And, uh, this is an important clue, gang. While he's there he does see a barge and a bunch of junk and junk cars are being loaded onto it yep this is going straight to staten island baby so that's how that chapter ends so the next chapter picks up with joe being ambushed by slagle who tries to run him over (laughs) there's not a submarine unfortunately okay Okay. i was about to say not a submarine unfortunately but joe is ambushed when he goes to meet the dodds quote unquote alone slagle Mm -hmm. tries to kill him but he gets away and he meets up with frank and chet chet got away because he sat on the bad guy (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> did we find out who the back guys were at least uh, we're yet. gonna have fucking chet <laughs> oh my god jesus christ we're gonna fucking chet the elephant man over god damn it chet <laughs> jesus why do you have to fall on the stereotypes you did a great job bud but god so damn it chet did a couple things chet found seaweed what did he fucking do wario butt stop him how the <laughs> fuck did he get on top of him described <laughs> <laughs> He jumped on I'm going to take five minutes to find this so we can read it. Yeah, <laughs> please, give me a moment. please, God. Please, Tyler. Jesus Christ. Oh, by the way, the chapter based on Chet, the name of the chapter, any guesses while I look for this? Hungry Cars boy. and cakes. I don't know. Oh, Neil, you're Cars not wrong. It's called, the chapter is called The Hungry Sleuth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Jesus Christ, Hardy Boys. I wonder if Nancy Drews is as problematic. <laughs> no, you know it's, Nancy Drew is as problematic because we've read a bunch of Nancy Drew books on him. Because we read a bunch of Nancy Drews. I forgot they, they've gotten uh, they've gotten a couple of them. <laughs> All right, let me break you off a piece of this. Chet, how did it go? Joe welcomed their friend. Say, you don't look very happy. Joe, you're home. You're safe, Chet exclaimed. 
He collapsed into the large green armchair. Woo, have I got an earful for you fellows. <laughs> When I saw this guy glaring at me, I decided it was now or never, so I landed on him. And they go, landed on him? <laughs> Chet nodded, pride swelling his chest, just took a run, <laughs> sailed off the end of the truck, and knocked him off balance. Then I dashed to the car. He didn't know who I was, so nobody chased me. <laughs> so he did oh, oh, sort of and, and, well, I him. forgot. I always I forget. I always forget. I, always forget. Chet, I, I forget that Chet has an eight-foot vertical leap. I always forget. <laughs> Chet, Chet can launch himself eight feet vertically and then land on anyone, and he killed that man. Chet is the proof that white men can jump. <laughs> yes, truly. Jumped Thick men God. can what? jump. And just demolished this man. <laughs> Broke their fucking neck. Uh, we're getting close. Don't worry. So, But Chet okay. does go on to describe how he found a bunch of seaweed at the junkyard. Uh, and he also yeah. found a vinyl record, which they play, uh, and it makes car crash sounds, which they deduce they use to sort of trick the police in which the direction they should be chasing cars. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, now, where's the brown paint? Oh, the brown paint's from Rust. Uh, I'm going to have to turn this one up to a four, buddy. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and push it. through chapter that. 15 because this is sort of when shit starts popping off in terms of okay. them solving okay. stuff. Okay. So they go back to the junkyard, all three of them, Chet, Frank, and Joe, and they find a dead bat in the junkyard. Okay. They okay. go home Ew. and find a message Gross. from their dad saying that he thinks that the two cases are connected. Yeah. Thanks, Ben. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Thanks, ben. So they take their dad's car and they see the barge again being loaded with junk and cars. The barge, by the way, is called Arachne. I thought it was fun. Nice. Mm, spider. Um, yeah, spider motif. So they take their boat, the sleuth, out and uh, try to sneak on to the barge. <laughs> Fucking hate that boat. I hate that boat. I wait. Does the boat die, Tyler? Can you the tell boat me doesn't does the die. Boat I'm die? sorry. God damn so it. So they try to get on to the barge, but they're attacked by a guy with a poisoned pitten. Okay. Jesus Christ. Which, where are they getting all these weapons? Poison climbing gear. So it's poison climbing gear. So they're yes. like, oh shit, this is the guy. This is the Spider Man. They fight the, the Spider Man on the boat and they kick him off the boat, Sparta style. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. And kill him, and he dies. For sure, he drowns. No, because he was wearing a wetsuit, so they determined that the Spider-Man was also the diver. Also, also the diver. Okay. Spider-Man is also Aquaman. So they go home. They, and that's it. This is chapter 16, <laughs> and they said we're where done. they see a note that says, Hey, Hardy boys, I've had enough of your shit. This is your last chance. You two need to get out of town on vacation or we're going to kill you and your family. Great. Love it. So this is sort of a multiple choice quiz for you guys. Do they A, go to the police, B, go to the FBI, or C, not go on a vacation? Not go on a vacation. Uh, can I go D, chloroform? <laughs> <laughs> C for chloroform is actually correct, O'Neill. Great call. Uh, so what they decide to do, a Trojan horse situation. So they drive to the next mm. town. They pretend they're going on a vacation. Wasn't the first idea. They pretend they're going on a vacation, right? So they uh, they they go and they buy a car in the next town over where no one knows oh. them, and they drive it back and hide in the trunk and this wait for it to get stolen. Where the fuck are they getting this money from? It's 1928. You could buy a car with a summer job, O'Neill. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. You know what? That's Is fair. it a yeah, nice fair. car? It's a fancy looking car. Mm, it's like okay. a used car because they keep buying and they, they steal used cars, but it's like a late mm -hmm. model fancy looking car Use it stands car. out yeah now at this point this is sort of where the mystery gets solved in the next chapter so i want you guys to sort of take final guesses and sort of take stock of where you're at okay and, okay. and sort of decide what's going so, on so one of my theories is that the spider-man sank young dodd whose name i cannot jack. remember jack 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 dodd sank the boat in order to get Jack's gear off of the boat in order to use to frame him in mm -hmm. the other cars. That I have. Yeah. Natch. The dead bat, I'm assuming, comes from a cave that they're hiding the cars in. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know why they keep getting strewn about, but I think the brown paint is being used to camouflage the cars. Ah, to look like junk cars. Good Or something call, like that, Liver. yeah. Um, mm, I like that. And then... Now, that is that is my one question, because we haven't really touched on it. What do we know about the junkyard owner? Uh, his name is Kitcher. That's it. Kitcher? They don't, right. they don't go into detail about it. <laughs> they, don't, they, don't, they don't grill Kitcher? They don't grill Kitcher, no. It's okay. just Kitcher's junkyard, and he's working with the bad guys, because they see him there working with yeah. the bad guys. Yeah, okay, cool. 
Olivia, you want to continue? Tyler, could you reread me the telegram? Which one? The discarded one that Slagle did not yes. send. Yes, the discarded one. Mm-hmm. Correct. Let me find it. I would also like to add on that the reason why the Dodds are being framed is because it's a rival farm. Now, I'm not going to buzz you guys because you're both correct. You both have pieces of the correct puzzle here. Mm-hmm. So you okay. don't have the whole picture. The only, the, but you you are, but you're both correct. Uh-huh. The only mystery that I am still trying to figure out is who is benefiting from the treasure mystery part I of think this. Can I tell you what? Can I tell you something? I it think has it might no be connection. Uncle. <laughs> I'm oh, just okay, going to tell you this cool, right cool, now because cool. we're going to get whole, into it. Just a side, it has just a side absolutely mission. no connection. It is a separate okay, mystery well, that then, is happening within this mystery. <laughs> so, okay, so. But, uh, let me okay, read this cool. for you. Yeah, yeah, read it. More nerve now. Trying for eight cylinder stock. Taking care of two friends. Attend to them when job done in a week or so. Expect <gasps> you for shipment tomorrow. Address to one Carlton Mill. Okay, I got the last bit. I have the last bit. I okay. got it. I yep. got it. Taking care of two friends. We have pretty much established that this is some cave offshore, right? Caves on the coastline flood at high tide. They're going to kill if the dogs. I don't know what time of year this is, but this is this is like, I forget, summer or winter. Say, I forget which one. Mentioned. Okay. Well, either way, the Dodds are being hidden in the cave. They're going to be framed, but they're going to be drowned with the tide as the new shipment of boat comes in. Ding, ding, ding. Uh, you guys are putting, starting to put it together. You've got ooh, almost all of the puzzle of this one. Ooh, now, would you like um, me to go ahead and finish, or do you have any more wild guesses? Olivia, do you have any other um, any other clues that you want to stitch in here? Somehow Carlton Melman knows about the treasure, I think, because it says, like, uh, we'll attend to them in a week from now, so they're going to try to find the treasure first before the Venus thing gets all thrown around so they're they want to use the time left for the venus thing to find the treasure and then axe the dodds i think Mm -hmm. i think that's everything i don't know what else and the the dodds are going to be framed for the thievery with their dead bodies essentially yeah Mm -hmm. i think and i don't know what uncle yeah i don't know what carlton millen is doing in town but that's the extent of what i know Okay. Cool. Tyler. Right, gang, let's let me it take it away and let me explain this mystery. So their car that they're hiding in the trunk of is stolen, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Natch. So the car is parked and they sneak out after the driver walks away and they find a net slung over the side of this cliff that they determine the cars are being driven down. The uh, net is like sort of spider. a way that they can drive over sort of a cliff. So that they it, to give them bless traction. Nineteen thirties. Oh my god! <laughs> so they also find a hidden passage covered in seaweed, uh, and they mm. smell dynamite. Mm. Yep. And there are a bunch of dead bats. So they determine that the dead bats came from them blowing up this sort of hole in the side of the ah, thing. They made, they made it. Is that where they sort playing of a the secret hideout where they walk uh-huh. in? and find an operation where they are painting the cars to look like junkers. Mm-hmm. Oh. Olivia got it. Uh, yes, where they're painting Very good. to look Very like good. junkers, and they would find all the cars and foreign weapons which were being hidden in the crates. Mm-hmm. 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 And they were all going to be in shipped the produce off. Crates. So they are then captured by Carlton Melman, and Melman okay. gives them sort of this like three page long explanation of everything that happens. So essentially, mm-hmm. what's going on is Spider Man is sort of their like saboteur. Who's like going around and and fucking mm. with everybody? Both Burnham and Slagle are in it because Burnham's farm is a competitor to the Dodds yeah. farm, mm. and Slagle knows about the treasure when he from when he ah. worked for them. Ah. So there's a combination of, hey, we've got this sort of job we're running where we're stealing cars and shipping weapons out of Bayport while we're here. These two, we can. Might as well I can fuck have my. I dots. can help my henchman out by helping his farm and sort of. You scratch my back, I scratch yours. Sort of situation. Mm-hmm. And exactly. Now they haven't found the treasure. They're locked up and they find the Dodds. They find Jack and Mister Dodd 
uh, the Hardys are thrown into sort of this jail with them. And, you know, there's the big evil villain speech from Melman. So at this point, they go, all right, boys, we have to pack it up and move to another city because the Hardys found out about us, right? First, let's kill everybody. Uh, so they... <laughs> <laughs> and then everyone dies. The end. And that's the end of the Hardy Boys, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks you so much. So the Hardys, the Hardys <laughs> trick them and almost get away before they're they're held at gunpoint. And at oh. this point, two things happen. One, their dad Fenton shows up from downtown where he's been tracking Papa, this Papa mystery dad. and beats up the guys and saves them. Two, Hell yeah. we're gonna check in on how does Chet's subplot <laughs> tie into the climax? <laughs> So they're trying to get away on a Jesus boat, right? Christ. Chet dove in mm -hmm. and because of his botany knowledge was able to tie up the propeller with seaweed. Shut up. Shut up. I hate this. I don't like this game anymore. <laughs> I I don't. <laughs> the dumbest I, shit I've ever heard. I don't think you need a bot. Hey, I'm not a scientist. I don't think you need a botany degree for that. I think you could just put seaweed on a, on a mo motor. I don't even think, hey, let me let me back that up. I don't think that's how motors work. <laughs> I, think, could, I don't I think, think that's how that cut works. Out seaweed. Pretty sure, unless he just spent, unless he spent an hour underneath there just lovingly wrapping the motor in seaweed. At that point, just fucking- It's a barge, it's huge. I, man. God damn it, so, Chet. And he didn't even get to use his fat. The Hardys, the Dodds, <laughs> and Fenton proceed to Beat the shit out of the criminals. Just, <laughs> just <laughs> full on Batman style. Take them these fools. out. Um, Jesus and before Christ. the police show up and arrest all the criminals. And then that just left the mystery of where is the treasure, uh, which they then sort of deduced that the note was wrong. It didn't say willows, it said billows, meaning wind meaning into the side of the cliffs. They got billowed and knocked into the side of the cliffs. So the treasure was hidden in the side of the cliffs and they follow Venus. They find the treasure for the Dodds uh -huh. and they clear their names and Chet gets to eat a piece of cake. And that hey. is the Shore Road Mystery uh, by one Franklin hey. W. Dixon. Betsy boys! Another great job for the Hardy Boys. Oh, Tyler, that was a lot of fun. That was that's enjoyable. Good. That's good. Hey, Quite Tyler, good this. job. Thank you so much. I did. Reading the book. I read this book for so long, despite it being. <laughs> Tyler, words did the we size of did we face. meet or exceed your expectations? Great of stuff. You guys did a, a very good job. Together. You guys got like seventy-five person? percent of it. Yeah, I think we, I think we kept up pace with the Hardy Boys. I think if we were there, I, hey, hey, Olivia, we might be the next Hardy Boys. <laughs> well, God, I guess that I depends would, on whether you yeah. think criminals would let you live five times. <laughs> it's that sort of a five not strikes and you're out rule that these yeah. international <laughs> criminals. Really. I'm gay and he's black. Like, they kill us on sight. No, no, not at <laughs> Yeah, we wouldn't even make it into the town that this is left in. We would be <laughs> run out of town almost instantly. <laughs> Tyler, you're the only one that could live in this fiction. <laughs> Joe and Frank would call me a slur and spit on me. Yeah, and spit. <laughs> yeah, I'd be I'd be chilling with Scratch. <laughs> just done, it's just drifting. It's We'd just be fucking chilling. Yeah. Rails. I'd smoke them out. He'd show me all the cool spots all in right, town. Okay. Well, thanks for playing along, and thank you to everybody for listening to yet another episode of Nancy Boys. Next week, uh, we'll be back we have with Bill the, Watterson Mysteries. The next Christian week, we'll be back the with Christian yet Wild another Hardy Boys novel, <laughs> The Hardy Boys. We'll be back with a Bill the Warthog mystery. That's right, we're getting into Christian children's you mysteries. You found the talking boar! <laughs> The talking, excuse me, he's not a boar, he's a warthog. Oh, <laughs> I can't believe you found it, that's so cool. And the answer was Jesus. All along. <laughs> All along. <laughs> Christ wept. <laughs> <laughs>